Hello! So, um, you guys asked me to do more um, business related uh, videos, so this is the first one because uh, last week I posted a picture of my kind of um, nice see them there actually, Royal Mail uh, grey mail sacks and I talked a little bit about um, OBA which is Royal Mail's online business account and I got like 50 comments <laughs> of people saying that they'd be really keen to hear a little bit more about it and um, how to set it up so this is what I'm going to talk about today. Yesterday I had quite a few orders to post, today is a bit lighter, but anyway, yesterday I sat down and whilst I was packing my orders I took some footage of the system side of OBA, so I'll show you that in a minute, but first I thought I'd talk to you a little bit about what it is and what I like about it and also, I don't know, some of the, the pros and cons basically. So, um, OBA is a business system that Royal Mail use which instead of going into the post office and taking all of your post that you've got beautifully stamped and queuing up and handing it over um, you bypass the post office staff in a way and you input everything online directly into Royal Mail system and they give you a unique reference code, a HQ number that you have put onto stickers or, or a stamp um, and you use that to um, distinguish all of your post basically and you have international ones uh, and UK first and second class and sign for and all sorts of things like that. Basically what it allows me to do is bag up all of my post um, at home and just simply take it into the post office, uh, drop it down next to the counter and walk straight back out again. Which I used to in our old house have a really really lovely relationship with the post office staff and it was nice kind of queuing up and having a little chat as they stick it up on my post and sent it off but in reality it was taking a lot of my time and it was costing me more and it was kind of a nuisance to everybody else. Um, I used to build up a massive queue behind me of poor people waiting whilst I faffed around with a massive bag of orders. So sorry people of Southampton. But now, like I said, I just bag it up, I drop it off, it's really easy. So when you go to set up Royal Mail's OBA account, you actually need to contact them directly and discuss over the phone your kind of criteria and whether your business meets what they what they want basically and there are minimums I don't know what those postal minimums are I don't think they tell you actually they just have a conversation with you and they decide uh, whether you meet that and I guess the process moves forward from there if you do meet those I send on average god this is hard I should have thought about this first I would say on average not counting pre-orders and stuff like that I probably send about 150 um, items a week. More than that on pin pre-order or launch dates, but it kind of averages out of that. So that met their threshold. Um, you don't have to meet the threshold, I don't think, in terms of what you send monthly. It's more the overall volume um, of the year. So for instance, um, I would go on what you send at Christmas because that's well, that's my busiest time um, and I know that my volumes go up a lot more at Christmas and January, February even the beginning of March around now, um, I'm a lot quieter than I am at that time of year. So yeah, it's not too complicated. The, the person on the, on the phone is a bit salesy, I guess. Um, so they want you to pay extra to have a postman come and like collect your mail every uh, once a week or something like that, or twice a week, depending on what you want. But it's quite a lot more money and the service itself is free. And so I'm quite happy to walk to the post office. It gets me out the house. I like having a little wander down. Um, so I didn't want to pay for that. But maybe, you know, if there comes a time when I have too much post to carry, um, you know, then it would be nice to have that service. And I could justify it, I guess. Um, but currently I don't. So um, once you're in to OBA, it's a little bit of a lengthy process. So that's one of the cons, I would say. It... It has certain criteria that you have to meet and the actual setup process takes quite a long time. Um, you get assigned an account manager and the account manager discusses kind of what your needs are, whether you're sending mostly UK orders or whether you're sending mostly international ones and if you send um, signed for or next day delivery, um, Saturday delivery, things like that. 
and once they've decided what you do, they assign you um, your kind of codes that you can use on the site. And you'll see what I'm talking about in the in a few minutes, basically, when I show you. But I basically use pretty much standard uh, first and class mail for the UK and um, standard international airmail. I do have the ability to send signed for stuff because um, now and again I do have to send things signed for. I send wholesale orders signed for, things like that, but I don't use those so much. I basically just use second class mail and international standard. Yeah, it's a little bit of a lengthy process. You have to have like a, I think they do a credit check because all of your um, postage payments get taken out on a monthly basis by direct debit. And so it's just a little bit of a process of setting up your account, liaising with your account manager, getting your codes sorted, and working out where your drop-off point is and things like that. But once that's done, the pros massively outweigh those cons. Um, it's definitely worth the slog because I set it up just in time really for Christmas busyness, uh, October time I think, last year. And it was like a godsend. It saves so much time. We all know the post office gets really busy at Christmas, so queuing is a joke anyway. And not only does it save so much time, it's cheaper actually as well. I don't know how they work it out, but second class uh, large letter, normal letter and parcel prices and first class are actually cheaper than they are to buy stamps or to um, pay over the counter at the post office. So not significantly so, I don't think, but maybe 15, 20 P per item on parcels and things like that. So it does mount up when you're sending a lot of posts. So it really is worth it. So it's quicker, it's cheaper. And it one of the massive things that I like, one of the biggest pros is that because it's direct debit and they charge you um, once a month, they send you invoices and statements, you can download them online. It means that when you're filling out your tax return, you can kind of really nicely keep your postage expenses in order. Prior to that point, I was ugh, battling with literally hundreds of post office receipts, and it's a flipping nightmare to keep on track and to keep them all uh, in the expenses sheet and it takes up so much space in a spreadsheet because there's just reams and reams and reams and reams whereas now I can just download my statement and input one monthly cost um, which is really nice and it helps me to see at a really quick glance how much I'm spending on postage so I really really like that those are massive pros for me one other con oh, something in my eye one other con con that's bad isn't it it sounds like it's a con rather than a not so positive thing about it but one other thing that I'm not so keen on or that I found quite difficult was um, the actual system itself starting off is really scary because it's it's quite it's not a very intuitive form um, online um, inputting things into and it feels like it's a test and you're gonna get something wrong and it's all so many boxes to tick and codes to put in um, and so at first it does take a little while to get used to it, but especially when you send your first signed for item because you need to use a special roll that has of stickers that has barcodes on and then you have a little book and you put those stickers in your book and you put the customer's address and things like that. But it's actually, it's actually okay once you get used to it, it is really, really quick. But the first few times I did it, it was like, am I doing this right? Am I putting these codes in right? Like, am I putting the weights in right? Am I gonna get charged? Are they not gonna get sent? Or it's a, it's a little bit of a clunky system and it could do with updating. And also it doesn't work on um, Safari, which is super weird and annoying. So I have to open Google Chrome uh, and use, use that for my OBA stuff. Minor inconvenience, it's no biggie. But yeah, getting it set up and learning the system is a little bit tricky, but once you've done it, it's like plain sailing. It is so good and yeah, it has saved me so much time and so much money and yeah, I just really like it. And I know some people were saying on the March Meet the Maker post kind of chat, I guess, that they don't like the idea of this kind of just putting things in sacks and handing them over and there being no kind of human contact or interaction because they really like um, chatting with their post office staff and I, I do get that like I had a couple of like I said pals at the um, Southampton um, centre of town branch that were so lovely and I really did enjoy chatting to and I do miss but at the end of the day, you're still getting out the house and getting some fresh air and having a little walk, you know, and you can give them a wave and if they're free at the counter, I do still go over and have a little chat and a catch up. But ultimately, I think 
using OBA and not doing it you know, via the counter makes much more business sense, or it does for me anyway. So I definitely encourage you once you get to a point that you feel like OBA will benefit you or that you think, you know, you just like to give them a call and check it out, I definitely encourage you to do that because, you know, at the end of the day, if you don't meet the criteria, then that's not the end of the world. Maybe see how your business grows and try again in a few months. But um, it really is worth it. So maybe give them a chat and, and see if you can get it set up. So yeah, can't really think of anything else to say about OBA, but that is it. I'm just gonna show you now the process side of things um, because those of you that do get it set up or have it set up but haven't yet used it, yeah, maybe this can help you out. Okay, so you're gonna have to excuse the noise from my neighbor uh, mowing the lawn, bless her. Um, but basically, for OBA, you have um, to separate your uh, post into uh, country or region and um, weight brackets. So at the moment, before I put it into the system, I pack all my orders and I've got UK, uh, Europe, um, New Zealand and Australia, which count as World Zone 2, and US, Canada, Puerto Rico, Mexico, Singapore, all of that, which counts as World Zone 1. So each of these is a separate category, um, but as you'll see in a minute, all of the internationals go in one bag, making it nice and easy, and all of the UK post goes in one bag. Um, this is what the bags look like. They're just massive, horrible grey, often ripped mail sacks, uh, and I've got two, so I'm getting them ready to pop in. Um, next thing I do, I've logged into the OBA online account. Um, hopefully you can see it. If I make my... There you go, that's a bit easier. Um, and I have selected create a new order. So this is what the order system looks like. Um, it's a little bit confusing. You have to pop in product codes uh, and things like that. I only use two predominantly, BPL, which is UK um, standard post, and OLA, which is international standard post. So I popped in BPL because I've got that big pile of UK orders. I'm gonna click details. Um, I generally send things second class, most of them are large letter. Um, you just pop in the number of items and your average item weight. Now, I know that most of my pins weigh about 35 grams, so usually for the large letters the average is 35 grams. Um, but if you don't know the weights, uh, or they're all different, um, it's a good idea to invest in one of these. Um, excuse the mess on my desk of pins. Um, this is just a simple parcel scales. Um, it's got a separate dial to the actual weight pad, which is good because I had an old one, like kitchen scales, and if a parcel was bigger than an envelope, it used to hang over the sides and obscure the display. So this is really easy. But basically, um, I you either weigh each of your items and kind of work out the average, or um, stick them all in the bag on here and then divide that by the number of items you have. So I had 26 large letters um, that were under 100 grams and I've got one that is over 100 grams. Um, it's a couple of prints. So I'm just going to pop that in. That's all of my UK orders done. It keeps a little running total here um, of how much it's going to cost. Um, and now I'm ready to pop uh, these into a bag um, and seal it up. Now I've done the UK, I've popped in OLA here, and I'm gonna work on the international ones. So first thing I have to do is choose whether it is EU, non, um, Europe but non-EU, or rest of the world. I'm doing my US ones first, so rest of the world. Again, these are large letters, um, but you've got the choice of selecting parcel or letter. And then country description has about 50 billion checkboxes, but I am sending large letters rest of world. Um, so again, same process, number of items, average item weight, and accept. Um, and then, yeah, I basically do exactly the same. Um, over 100 grams, which I've got uh, one of here, um, that'll have to go in its own little category because it costs a little more. Um, and then when it comes to selecting uh, Australia, um, I can go rest of world. And instead of saying large letters rest of world, I'd choose large letter rest of world zone two. 
Um, it's really easy to find uh, what falls into what zone with Royal Mail just by googling it and they've got a nice little map on their website. Uh, I have a little printout which I keep by my desk. Now that I'm done with my order I've popped everything in by weight and country. Um, it literally took me a couple of minutes but I have a lot of things that are the same size and weight and I'm also very used to this system. Um, when I first started it was just a little bit of a fiddle to make sure I got everything right and kind of learned the codes and stuff. Um, but the total for today is £57.18, not too bad, um, and I think there's about 30, 40, 40 or 50 orders in there, um, so that's not, that's not too bad, it's good because the majority of them are UK, so <laughs> otherwise it would be a lot higher. But I just literally hit confirm order down here, it asks me if I'm sure, yep. And then it prompts me to print this out, and this is my sales order, um, which I will pop. Uh, into the bag and uh, take it into the post office. Uh, some post offices like you to put one in the bag and take one um, with you to hand over, but mine just like one in the bag. That's all printed and ready to go, um, and then I just need to pop these on each bag. Um, UK, you've got an option of second class and first class, um, and then I need to pop some details about what's in the parcels and pop my um, HQ number, which is basically what they use to know that the parcels are coming from me, and also my poster number. Again, these are all on your account. They stay the same, so it's just a case of writing them out um, every time. And with the international ones, I literally just have to put the date on. Um, and then these are all free, basically. You order them directly from the Royal Mail OBA site. Um, and you just get the cable ties again for free um, and you just tag the right ones up. These guys are ready to go and all I need to do now is run down to the post office with them um, and I better go because it's literally half past four. So I'm gonna head off now and um, hopefully you found that useful. That's all from me.